What's up everybody, James Jackson here, back again with another video. If you're new to my channel, I do tips, tricks, news, and reviews for the film and video making industry. So if you do like the content here, please make sure to subscribe to the channel, hit that likes, the likes definitely help out, and make sure to hit that bell so you can stay up to date on all the content going forth. Also, make sure to join my Patreon page. I just started my own Patreon page where we are going to be putting out exclusive camera reviews, uh, camera comparisons as well as uh, content that you guys are interested for and in building a filmmaking community there so definitely check out my patreon page and see if you're interested I would love to have you guys join me so now uh, let's talk about ProRes raw uh, a lot of you guys have been asking me because you I, you know I have given my feelings on ProRes raw for quite some time now uh, and a good friend of mine Eric you asked me a while ago why is it that I don't like ProRes RAW? And there have been, I had my issues mainly because I didn't personally feel like ProRes RAW was not really RAW. That was until Apple has made a major, major update that kind of wiped away any of my uh, issues that I had with ProRes RAW. But before we get into that update, let's talk about the, the problems that I had with ProRes RAW. So, First of all, the main issue I had was is that it didn't have sort of the key raw metadata control that most people who are used to filming raw uh, were able to access to. That included Kelvin temperature, tint, ISO, and even certain access like changing highlights, gammas, gains, lifts, saturation, vibrate, lot, way more metadata, even the gamma, the color science, all of those were not accessible with ProRes RAW uh, when it was first released. Really, the only thing you can do was change the exposure. And there, there was a little bit more uh, play with Final Cut, but really it was just being able to change the, ex the exposure, maybe tweak the highlights and shadows a little bit, but it wasn't metadata, it was baked in. And in Premiere, when it finally got, to, ProRes RAW finally got to Premiere, it was even worse. It was just literally just an exposure slider and that was it. So for me, it was not, even though it had a lot of great perks, it gave you a 12 bit codec with 444 color sampling because it's raw. And basically it was, it was ProRes XQ with a bit much more compressed that was offered to a much more wide variety of cameras, which was awesome. However, the lack of the raw metadata was really the big hindrance for me, and also personal reasons that I am a DaVinci Resolve user and ProRes RAW is not accessible in DaVinci Resolve at all. Well, all of that has now changed with the big update that Apple has given to Final Cut 10. Now again, this is only for Final Cut 10, so if you are a Premiere, Avid, and especially a DaVinci Resolve user like myself, this doesn't affect you. But if you are a Final Cut user, this is a pretty big deal update. And big shout out to DP Reviews for, uh, they were the ones that I noticed that came out with this content. And as you will see here, essentially what's happening is now that the ProRes RAW got a whole lot better. And essentially, I, I won't uh, be able to play the video, but essentially what has happened is, those metadata controls that we've been asking for for ProRes RAW is now accessible in Final Cut. So you can now have metadata control over the Kelvin, the, the tent, as well as you can have control over ISOs. So the key things that we all look for in a RAW workflow is now they're accessible, which is, which is fantastic. So cameras like the S1H and the newly announced S5 especially the S5 has gotten a whole lot more interesting. And now I have to sort of rethink my thoughts on ProRes RAW. However, that doesn't come without some cons still. <laughs> it, it, it's not perfect. So again, all these new features that come with it is great, except the fact that it doesn't come with every single camera that is able to use ProRes RAW. So, uh, only a select few cameras are gonna be accessible to the whole thing. I think the Panasonic cameras are the ones that get the full access to it. Uh, but something like the newly announced A7S III and the other Sony cameras that have ProRes RAW capabilities, none of them can access this update. So, 
and I believe Nikon is limited as well with this ProRes RAW update. So I think it's only the Z cams and the Panasonic cameras that gain the full spectrum access of this new ProRes RAW update, while the other cameras don't get access to this metadata control. Which is kind of a bummer, especially if you're one of these people that were looking at something like the A7S III, or you have that Sony FX9 that you, and you wanted to try to really see, if, look at doing that 16-bit RAW workflow. It's still real, all you really have right now is still a ProRes XQ 444 codec that's com slightly more compressed. So, but it is still a major, major update and kudos to Apple for finally getting on this. This, this is something that should have come with ProRes RAW, but again, it's a new RAW codec, so, uh, but it's just great that now these metadata is accessed, even if it's to a select few cameras. So, now the question is, What's gonna happen? Will this ever get the DaVinci Resolve? I, I don't know. Again, I still think they're sort of gonna wait till Aerie either adopts ProRes RAW or Blackmagic hopes that Aerie will adopt Blackmagic RAW. I don't know if Aerie will adopt Blackmagic RAW uh, or even adopt ProRes RAW, but we shall see. But I think Blackmagic really now has to seriously consider should they incorporate ProRes RAW into the workflow because there's gonna be a lot of people looking and demanding for it. But we shall see, we'll see how it goes. But I just wanted to give you guys this little update. Uh, so yeah, I've for the longest time I've been bashing ProRes RAW but now it has really piqued my interest. Uh, unfortunately for me, I'm a, I'm a DaVinci Resolve user so, and Final Cut is like my least favorite uh, NLE to work with so I am not going to be able to access it anytime soon. So hopefully in the future, I'll get a chance to try it out. But for those of you that have tried it out, please leave a comment below and let me know if those Final Cut users out there who've used it, uh, let me know how you guys feel about it. And also just leave me comments below about what you guys think about this overall update. Make sure to leave a like as well. It definitely helps the channel out. And until next time, take care everyone.